Welcome back to my channel. We're still getting to know each other here, so let me reintroduce myself. My name is Arielle, and I'm a career explorer at heart and a data analyst by trade. Now, I believe that everyone should reach their level of self-actualization in their own time, but I'm here to explore that with you. So I wanted to come on today and share a bit about a 30, 60, 90 day plan that a lot of us don't really talk about. So if you Google 30, 60, 90 day plan, what's gonna come up is one, it's just a bunch of like just random advice about creating a 30, 60, 90 day plan. And if you find some reputable advice about a 30, 60, 90 day plan, it's more than likely about how to create a 30, 60, 90 day plan. And creating one is all good and gravy, but what do you do when you actually have one created? How do you execute it? So today we're gonna jump into how do you execute on a 30, 60, 90 day plan? And then how do you level up in your career so that you can just always rely on that information that you set an expectation on in the beginning. So like I said, when you search a 30, 60, 90 day plan, you'll get a lot of information. Some of it's helpful and some of it's not. But there are two real reasons why you'll actually need a 30, 60, 90 day plan. One is when you're interviewing. Bringing a 30, 60, 90 day plan towards the end of an interview will give your interviewee a perspective of how you actually think and how you plan to execute on the role if you were hired. So it kind of gives them a glimpse of the strategy, the strategic thinking that you have, and it gives them a glimpse of some of the plans that you have. Can you see yourself in the role? And then how will you insert yourself so that you add value? So creating a 30, 60, 90 day plan to speak to what you plan to do in an interview is a great way to set yourself apart from the, from the competition. Now, another reason that you would actually create a 30, 60, 90 day plan is two weeks into the room, into the role. So the reason you'll create a 30, 60, 90 day plan is for you to set a foundation and start to put a plan together that you hope to execute in the, in the process. Now, if you create one two weeks into your role and you present it to your, to your boss, then you'll be able to set expectations on how you want the job to go. So a misconception that people have when they're doing a 30, 60, 90 day plan is for them to put like small tasks on there that they're gonna do in their 30, 60, 90 day plan that's gonna help them in the job. But what you want this 30, 60, 90 day plan to be is a conversation on how you can add value to the company. And you're creating objectives based on what your boss is, um, priorities are so that you can align on what success looks like in the role. A lot of times we talked about like the leadership styles, right? So a lot of times if you take this task manager approach, then you're not owning the task that you're doing. You're literally just taking tasks as they come. But if you come into the role with a 30, 60, 90 day plan, you're letting your boss know that you've already started to strategically think about how you can level up in your career. Now, individually, of course, by you having a 30, 60, 90 day plan, you're deciding how do I want to show up in my role? So when you what you what you what you'll need to consider when you're doing a 30, 60, 90 day plan is what you want your brand to be as well as what the company objectives are. So I'll talk a little bit more about five tips that I can give you so that you can execute on a 30, 60, 90 day plan after you create one. Now, just to remind you, a 30, 60, 90 day plan is not a learning plan. This is not for you to say, well, in the 30 days, I'm gonna meet with this person and learn about this. In 60 days, I'm gonna meet with that person and learn about this. If you're coming into a role where you're having more leadership um, expectations, even if your boss doesn't set an expectation, it's really great for you to set the roadmap and then align on it so that you can move forward. Now, if you have a boss and they're, they're not really micromanaging, this is also a good way to relieve them of a little bit of control so that you can actually take the ranks of your own career. So what, what that does is, it allows them to not just kind of micromanage you and decide, okay, well, let me keep giving this person something to do. You've already set your roadmap and you've already designed how am I going to focus my time in the next 30, 60, 90 days so that they can actually know, okay, let me back off and let them do their job. Now, the goal of a 30, 60, 90 day plan, like I said, is to create to establish a, a benchmark for success, right? So these five tips are going to be for you to execute on that 30, 60, 90 day plan. Now, in your 30, 60, 90 day plan, you're gonna wanna have objectives. Now, these objectives are, they should be aligned with the company's goals. Now, objectives could be, you know, streamline the project management process or streamline or document best practices within the quality assurance department. Once you identify, you know, 10, 10 objectives, let's just say you find 10, then you'll want to bring at least three to the table so that you can come have a conversation with your boss about 
what objectives you have in the role. Now, the way you find these objectives is by coming onto the, the job by exploring what you're experiencing. So take the first two weeks not to come out with these objectives, but for you to formulate your objectives by actually observing what's our, what the processes, what processes are already in place, as well as identifying areas of improvement based on your own skill sets. So when you think about exploring and, and understanding what's going right, what's going wrong, who are the key people involved? Your 30, 60, 90 day plan is not individual to you. Your 30, 60, 90 day plan should consider other people, which takes me to my next point. In your 30, 60, 90 day plan, you're going to first identify what objectives and the rate, the way you're gonna do that is by two, um, exploring. You'll need to identify people in the organization that are gonna help you execute your 30, 60, 90 day plan. I suggest that after your first two weeks, you start putting some coffee chats on people's calendar so that you can understand what they like about the role and what they don't like about the role. How can you be more of assistance? And then how can you actually level up? What was the person in the role like before you? And then how did they actually you know, move? How did they, how did they like to work together? In your 30, 60, 90 day plan, you need to have objectives as well as people, stakeholders who are going to be a part of this 30, 60, 90 day plan. This gives you a global perspective. It allows you to conceptualize the role in your first two weeks and then give your boss a really good foundation that you understand the role and you've identi identified areas to, to, attack, to attack some objectives. And the next part are gonna be really, really um, important. So deliverables. Your 30, 60, 90 day plan is going to have deliverables. Now your deliverables can be anything from a one pager training document or a program that you wanna implement based on the, the, the areas of, of um, improvement that you notice. You'll wanna have KPIs that you've explored and understand that the team actually tracks so that you can improve, you can implement that into your program or your plan. Or you can talk about how this deck or how this training module is going to increase the bottom line or improve productivity or increase team morale. You'll wanna talk about the, how the deliverable is going to drive success. Now in your first two weeks, not only are you exploring to understand your objectives, you're also exploring to understand the people involved. And lastly, you're exploring to understand which deliverable do you want to present to your boss. Now you wanna be realistic when you do this because there are pie in the sky dreams, right? There are you know big audacious goals that we have for our career. And then there's realistic things that we wanna set. So depending on where you are in your career, maybe you're that person who doesn't mind working all day and all night on a project that you set forth. Maybe you have the time to do that. It's really up to you to decide in your first 30, 60, 90 day plan, how much time do you have to dedicate to the role, the, just the core functions of the role, and then how, how much time do you have to go above and beyond to start to implement new strategies and new plans that you've come up with yourself. So be realistic about the deliverables that you come up with. As you think about you know, deliverables that you want to actually put out, start to outline a strategy on what would it take for me to actually implement this deliverable. Before you have your first you know, 30, 60, 90 day plan meeting with your manager, you'll want to start to think about, now if I bring this deliverable to the table, how often will I have to work? What people do I need to consider? Do I know enough with, with my experience that I have right now to kill this one. You don't wanna give yourself a stretched goal and set the expectations high and then under deliver. You want this to be a deliverable that you've done in your previous role that you can bring to the table and it will be easy for you to execute because you, you've done it over and over and over again. However, when you implement some of the company's objectives into that plan, then you'll be able to mesh the two, something that you've done before so it doesn't create this extra workload for yourself and then a new strategy, a new way to think about it so that you can bring something new to the table within your first 90 days of being on the job. So that's your deliverable. Thinking realistically about what it is that you want to deliver is essential for you to keep that work-life balance, but it's also really important for you to keep your brand intact so that you don't over-promise and under-deliver. The most important thing about your 30, 60, 90 day plan is that you establish a cadence to meet with your manager. Now, like I said, if you have a manager who's not very micromanagey, then you might do a once a month meeting. If you're higher up in leadership, that means you won't need to meet with your manager as often. And so you'll set that cadence as is, once a month, twice a month, 
once a week. It depends on your status in the company. And then it allows you to set that cadence so you can set a realistic timeline on when you expect to deliver on certain milestones. So you've set your 30, 60, 90 day plan. You have your objectives. You've thought about the deliverables that you want to put out there. You've outlined the one deliverable that you can actually execute on. And now it's time to establish that cadence. So considering everything that you know so far since you've been on the job, how does your manager seem? Do they seem like a micromanager or do they seem like they would like to be hands-on in what you're doing? And then think about how often do you actually need to meet with them to gather more information based on the strategy that you've put together. Some of what you're gonna do is gonna to need to be informed by the manager as well as your coworkers. And so you'll want to bake in those touch points. As you get more information, you'll be able to share part of your 30, 60, 90 day plan. As you get new information, you might be able to shift. And so you'll want to establish a cadence because if you just have a 30, 60, 90 day plan, and you never really talk about it, then it's like you never did one in the first place. So I suggest in your first two weeks, and I'm gonna challenge you here because if you've never put time on your manager's calendar, I'm gonna challenge you to go out there, establish that cadence, and then allow them to tell you what works for them and what doesn't. Have that conversation with your boss so that you don't leave things floating up in the air so by the time performance reviews come around, they don't necessarily know what you've been doing. You've been killing it. All they know is that you've been doing your job, you've been showing up, but they can't say what you've done so well and what you've excelled at. So again, establish a cadence. And I, I urge you to present this 30, 60, 90 day plan to them in, an, in, in, the, the, in your first meeting. Now, the reason I say interview, you hear me catching myself when I'm saying interview, in, interview is because if you use a 30, 60, 90 day plan in your interview, then you definitely want to bring your 30, 60, 90 day plan to the table, a reiteration of that, because now you've been on the job for two weeks, you had your expectations, and th then you'll bring your learnings to the job. Now you can start to have a conversation two weeks in about strategy and things that you've learned now that you would have done differently, and then how you can actually execute on that that 30, 60, 90 day a little bit better. Now, like I said, if you don't establish this, this meeting, this cadence with your boss, then it's like you've never created a 30, 60, 90 day plan. And you'll end up being a task manager, which means you'll just start to take projects as they come. And that's not what you want to do. So this last thing that I want to bring, share for you, this last tip is for you to realign every quarter. So after your, your 90 days in, you're no longer a new employee. You have at least one deliverable that you've executed and you have one win under your belt so you can go ahead and add that to your resume. But you don't wanna stop here. A lot of times employees get into autopilot. And so if you're an autopilot, yeah, you did the first 90 days, you rock them out the park and then you start to just coast. If you just start to coast in your job, that means that you're not leveling up and that means you're not sharpening your tools. You're not meeting new people. You'll want to evaluate what went well and then what didn't go well so that you can reevaluate what that next 30, 60, 90 day plan looks like and you can execute on that one full fledged. Now you don't need to meet with your manager every 30 days about your 30, 60, 90 day plan, but this is a way for you to take ownership of your career, think about it in a quarterly basis and execute on your vision as you see fit. Now this 30, 60, 90 day approach, this execution approach is totally ownership based. Imagine yourself owning your business. Your life is your business. So even in a job, even in your career, you'll want to take full ownership of your time and then establish realistic expectations with your boss, your coworkers and your stakeholders so that they know what you're working on. This is gonna set the foundation for you to have very many conversations about leadership along the way. So I encourage you to take these five steps along with you in your next your next career journey let me know how they work comment below and let me know if you if you've used these tips before or if you have other things that you've learned along the way since you've executed your 30 60 90 day plan